There's a lot of us who still live an everyday life day to day. And because it doesn't look like what they saw on TikTok or look like what they saw on Reels, they think they're falling short. And this book was to be like, girl, not only are you not falling short, you're where the magic is at. listening to the Redefining Wealth podcast with Patrice Washington. In this space, we talk about what it means every week to chase purpose, not money. Because as a personal finance expert for over the last decade, I truly believe that wealth is so much more than just talking about money and material possessions. I believe, and we believe as a community in the original 12th century definition of wealth, which says it's about the condition of well-being. If you want to understand more about the six pillars of wealth, if this is your first season with us at Redefining Wealth, I want you to get locked in. So go over to patricewashington.com forward slash start here so that you can learn what we call the truth about wealth and understand the six pillars that really impact your finances, even when you're not thinking about it. Today's guest is my girl, Maddie James, and she is here to talk about her new book, Everyday Magic, the joy of not being everything and still being more than enough. This conversation is so good and we can really file this under the space pillar. Here we talk about setting up your life to support you and the way that Maddie lays this out is well, it's magic. So before we jump into the episode, let me do this week's affirmation. You know, you got to speak positivity into your life, into your day. You got to affirm positivity. You got to affirm abundance. You got to affirm yourself to wealth. This week's affirmation is joy is the standard. I embrace the magic of everyday things because I understand that there is no entitlement to joy. No matter what life brings me, it is my duty and responsibility to fight to find gratitude because gratefulness is the currency of favor. My joy is up to me and I retire expired ideas and expectations of others surrounding what I should be doing as opposed to what I know feels right for me. Joy is not deep and does not have to be reserved for special occasions. It is, however, deliberate, and I will look for ways to experience it every single day in every single way. Declare today, joy is the standard. Today's guest is Maddie James. Maddie is a host, author, and CEO of the Maddie James Company in Bossfluence. In addition to creating lifestyle content for her Instagram, YouTube channel, and blog, MaddieJames.com, she teaches thousands of creators and influencers how to grow their following, pitch brands, and create content for profit with her Bossfluence online courses and programs. Today, she is back on the Redefining Wealth podcast to discuss her newest book, Every day, well, her first book, really. Yes. Every day magic. Without further ado, here is my girlfriend in real life that I just <laughs> adore, Maddie James. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. You know how much you mean to me. So I love getting to chat with you personally or professionally. I am so excited for you. First time you. author. Yeah. Before we get into this episode, I just have to say, Maddie is so cute right now. If you are listening on a podcast platform, I need you to go to YouTube and check her out because when I got on Zoom, when her when her picture appeared, I did this wave. All I could do was this body yaddy yaddy yaddy. Like there's this this wave in your hair. You look so cute, friend. I'm just I'm Thank literally you. so excited to be chatting with you. I really, really Me too. Am. Me too. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's dive in to this book, Everyday yes. Magic. Yes. You were doing your thing, you know, showing us these beautiful children <laughs> on Instagram all the time and the married life and the home decor and all things fashion and beauty. Like, 
literally, I've just watched you probably for like a decade now, um, just share, yeah. you know, yeah. all of these different things about your life. What made you say it's time to bring that together into a book format and why Everyday Magic? So I, in, in, when the pandemic hit, I feel like, you know, we were all home a little bit more scrolling more. And and I think really being a little bit more intentional with like the kind of content we digest because we had more time to actually take it in. And so it became really important to me, um, not only as an influencer, but even as a teacher, just to make sure that the things I was sharing added joy to your life and actually added value that you could actually use it. It just wasn't to be like, oh, look, pay attention to me, which I get. That's what social media is for when you're an internet professional. But what I also realized is that, you know, when the pandemic hit, my kids were five, two, and Christian was a newborn. I had him New Year's Day 2020. So I had super small kids. My husband was home full time and I had never been so full of joy. Like I just, you know, I would, I, I would have moments where I was kind of overwhelmed by just like how fortunate I felt, you know, we had only moved a, probably a year prior to the pandemic, but I felt so fortunate that when we have the space to like, you know, someone's getting on somebody's nerves, they can go to the playroom or they can go to their bedroom or they could come to the basement. Like we just had space. And then I really had to lock into these routines because people were getting homeschooled now. They weren't going to school. I really had to like look at the person I was married to like, okay, do I, do we, do we actually like each other? Cause you're here all the time now. We cannot go anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was like, wow, well, let's, let's see if we're really, you know, into each other. But then also, you know, how do I take care of myself? Because that was also a lot because I worked from home. Everybody was home. Everything was happening at home. And so I really had to like kind of take a magnifying glass and evaluate all the things of my everyday because every day really became something regardless of what you did in life, what tax bracket you were in. The pandemic was the equalizer. It was like, girl, everyone's at home having their everyday. And so I started realizing, I was like, gosh, I really am filled with light and joy. And I was like, but why? because it certainly wasn't easy, right? So this isn't the podcast where it's like, oh my gosh, it just comes so naturally to me because the way it doesn't, (laughs) it just does not. You know, every day I'm like, let me look up something on parents.com. And I'm like, okay, let's see what I need to do here for somebody's father's day. Or, you know, I just, I do always need help. I'm always learning. And I love that about myself. Like I mess up every single day. And I think that's just part of being human. But even in the midst of my shortcomings, even in the midst of not being perfect, even in the midst of not being everything to everyone, I still had a joy that I was able to hold on to. And that was why I wrote the book. I wanted to talk about the magic of every day and essentially the framework of my life, because I was like, anybody could have this. This isn't unique to me. You know, I always love to tell people, I'm like, I'm nobody special. It's just simply doing the work every day. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've always said in life is no matter what I'm experiencing, I'm always fighting to, to find the gratitude in it. Like, you could put me in the worst scenario and I share personal things with you, you know, and I still always end up laughing. Like, like always. you still, I I still always end up laughing and I still always end up finding the silver lining because I'm like, I want to fight to find the gratitude in this experience. And what I'm hearing you say is even in, you know, the height of the pandemic and, you know, some people are looking at their spouses <clears throat> and it wasn't like, <laughs> It wasn't working out the way that it worked out for you. Um, <laughs> praise the Lord. And glory, 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 and having a different experience, right? And so, you were fighting or or establishing that there was mm. magic even in the midst. Yes, yes, of all the things. Yes, yes, that's exactly it, friend. I feel like in the midst of, because every day is hard, especially as women, I feel like we have such full plates. And I mean this from every single avenue of life, whether you're childless or you have five kids, you know, whether you work a traditional nine to five or you're entrepreneurial, like whatever the case is, we all have full plates. We all have people that mean so much to us, what I call our village, you know what I mean? And so we're navigating these spaces and at the same time, still trying to figure out how to take care of 
of ourselves, how to know ourselves as we grow and evolve and still do the really regular stuff. Like whether you do your laundry or send it out for laundry service, laundry still got to get done. You know, <laughs> like I, I, and so I started looking at this stuff. I'm like, okay, there's stuff that we all care about. We all got to eat. We all got to do laundry. You know what I mean? We all need to take care of ourselves. We have to maintain the relationships, of, you know, with people within our village. So how do you do this without losing joy, without being everything and still understanding, which is the biggest thing. That's the subtitle of the book, the joy of not being everything, but still being more than enough because that it's, it's, I know it's two parts, but they're one part and I need everybody to get it. I need everybody to get it. (laughs) I I need a look. I need everyone to get it too. You need to like break down that subtitle and why you chose that. I've been really fortunate because I got to say my publisher, Hachette, and and actually Worthy Books, so they print a lot of faith-based titles. And I think just from even the first time we met before I even signed the deal, they I really came in kind of really vulnerable and just kind of said, I feel really fortunate with the everyday I have. I want women to have joy that isn't exclusive to a trip, isn't exclusive to a birthday, isn't exclusive to an anniversary or a monetary goal or even a career goal. I want this to be the default for their everyday. And I really wanted to talk about the super simple stuff like Let's talk about why we need to take care of ourselves every single day, right? And understanding that self-care isn't this frivolous, indulgent activity that we see in movies and TV. It is a discipline and it serves you and everything and everyone else who's in your life whenever you do take care of yourself. It's not something to feel guilty about. It's something that's dedicated to you, like you should be dedicated to. And I really try to share kind of like, you know, parallel my own life because I really consider myself an everyday woman. I know I'm I'm really fortunate and I'm, I guess, in a in the public eye more than the average person. But for the most part, I am Maddie. I am Matt and Jatu's daughter. I'm Chris's wife. I'm Mesa Caliana and Christian's mom. I'm a regular everyday woman. And so I really wanted to talk about that, but how I found the pockets of joy in having a routine, you know, why I can get up in the morning, you know what I mean? And say, all right, I don't feel like working out, but I know this is what I got to do because I know I'm trying to look cute in pictures. Like, you know, like those little things, like those are things that are important. And what I also thought about was, I talk a lot about my mom and my upbringing, uh, my mom and my dad and, and my upbringing in the book. And I I was really fortunate to have such a great upbringing, but there is so many noticeable differences because I was talking to, I think my sister, and I was saying, I was like, mom was great, but gosh, she didn't have to deal with the amount of distractions I have. Like, you think about the amount of distractions. There's email. I talk about this in the book. There's email. There's every streaming service under the sun, right? Email. (laughs) social media, email, email, you know, there's just all the things. And then on top of that, you're still supposed to be great at work or in business and then still come home and like navigate like a normal person. And it's like your brain has literally been fragmented into 31 different places. And so I, I, the problem is, is that we think we need to be in all 31 places and you just don't, you need to decide what places actually matter and be present there. Mm, yeah. I totally get that. And knowing that that is enough. That that is the main thing. That's the main thing. And so I had to get a little deeper, even though like my whole thing in the book, the the reason why I, I use the word joy specifically in the subtitle was because my favorite thing about joy is that it's not deep. It's just deliberate. Like joy is super deliberate. You cannot fake joy. You can't. You can fake being nice. You can even fake looking rich and having money. You know, you can you can fake so many things. Joy is such a deliberate thing that you cannot fake it. Like you can see when somebody's like not at peace, not at ease, you know, joy is something. And that's the thing. I was like, I don't want people out here navigating in a false way, in an inauthentic way. I want you to be. And, and the book is not. And I say this because it's so important this book isn't for you to do exactly what I did because we're different people. What works for you may not work for me and vice versa. And that's more than okay. But magic is a framework. So magic stands for meaningful, aesthetically pleasing, goal-oriented, 
intentional, and consistent. Mm -hmm. And if you can make every day one, two, if not five out of those five things, it's impossible to miss out on your joy, truly. Because I'm like, when you show up for yourself in a consistent way, let me tell you something, nothing makes me happier than results. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, think about it. Like when you're like, okay, I want to get a little bit more toned this summer. So you work out, you show up every single day at 6 a.m. for yourself, 45 minutes a day. In three months, when you look at yourself, you're going to be pleased. Yes. You're going to be pleased. Yeah. And that's where we get the confidence to continue on. That's where you get the confidence to keep going and building momentum in your life. It's from the results, but the results only come through consistency. Right. So when you're consistent, when you're inconsistent and you don't get the result and it gives you evidence of your failure. Right. Be- or mm-hmm. like what you may perceive to be a failure because you're right. like, oh, I keep making the same goals. Right. right. A lot of times we make the same goals because they're not even meaningful to begin with. So then oh. we're interested. We're not committed. And so because we're not committed, we're not intentional and because we're not intentional. We're not consistent. Come and on. So now. We're we're not creating everyday magic. We are, you know, creating these scenarios where we feel trapped in a, a loop of mediocrity. Oh, whew. and it doesn't even have to be that. I, that's the thing. I, I think I say that. I believe I, I want to say it's the outro of the book, if I'm not mistaken. But I was like, I want you to avoid the cancer of mediocrity mm-hmm. of every day. Because it becomes a loophole that we just, you know what I mean? Because we're doing things that don't matter to us, you know? One of my favorite examples is like, you know, running a marathon, right? Like so many people have that goal. People want to run a marathon. It's quite it's quite a feat. You know, anybody who tells me they've done it, I'm always super impressed. However, running a marathon is not one of my goals because it's not meaningful to me. It's impressive, but it doesn't matter to me. Now, if running a marathon matters to you by all means, but when something doesn't matter to you, it's impossible to be consistent with it. You will not do it deliberately, so it will lack intentionality, right? It really won't be on your goals because that's not even something you're looking to do. And for me, the reason why aesthetically pleasing is such an important part of the framework is because when you deem something beautiful or aesthetically pleasing, there's an attachment we have to that. You know, I think about my crush growing up, like, you know, I'm like, Usher was absolutely everything to me, right? I'm like, I did not miss a thing, not a magazine cover, not an album, not an interview, because he was aesthetically pleasing to me. But that's the same thing when we are intentional about having things that we deem aesthetically pleasing in our lives, we show up for it differently. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. I really love all of this talk too about joy because, you know, I've shared this with you. I'm in a season of scaling joy. Mm -hmm. And so that has been very important to me. It's why I took a solo vacation, you know, for, for my birthday. It's why, you know, I've just elected to do certain things in my life. And you're so right. Joy is not deep. It's deliberate. That, I just had to go back to that. That <laughs> is so good because what I have learned in this season, I will say probably the last year and a half or so, is that I was just not being intentional about my joy, mm. right? Like, I wasn't even pinpointing things that brought me joy and like articulating that Mm. felt like joy was a little sprinkle I could get here and there Uh in between doing all of the things as you call them the mundane things like the routine tasks of life as a a mother at that time as a wife as a homeowner you know as a daughter as like so I'm doing all of these things and every once in a while I get to have a little joy yeah um And when I realized that, like when I turned 40, I was like, "Mm -mm, no, mm -mm, I want to build, I want to build my life around joy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to have those intentional, like you said, it's not about, oh, we have to have the trips and we have to go do all these things right? right. in the everyday, but just that awareness, girl, that shift is something for me. It it is a complete game changer, Pete. It's a complete game changer because then one, it's so, I, I guess freeing might be the right word when you understand that your joy is up to you. 
one of my favorite quotes, I think it was Monica who said it maybe like a few years ago on social media. She was like, well, they can't take joy from me because they never gave it to me. And it's like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's actually that simple, you know? So it's like when I am really focused, I'm zeroed in with God. We are talking on a regular basis. We are locked in and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I am just in a season where even when things are hard, because I think that's also what I try to reveal within the book, right? A lot of times we're avoiding joy because it actually requires work. And we, we, we have this entitlement to joy. And I'm like, you have to hold on to it for dear life mm -hmm. on a daily basis between yeah. this 24 or seven news cycle. If you're on Twitter for 15 minutes, child, it's gone. You will be on a roller coaster. <laughs> you could come in, you can come in good with the best of intentions. Like, let me see what's going on today. And before you know it, you were like, earth is exhausting. Yes. <laughs> People are ghetto. I am done here. Like, change your whole mood. I knew I was on Twitter too long one day because my four-year-old asked me for an apple. And I'm like, man, you always want to eat fruit. And Chris looked at me, he was like, are we, are we yelling at the baby because you want to eat fruit? And I was like, you know what? I just need to detach for a little bit. I just need to detach. But that's what I'm talking about. Like if you're not super deliberate and intentional also about what you, what your input is, right? Like you just scrolling all day. It's like, what did you learn today? That's one of my favorite questions to ask the kids. How did your brain get bigger today? You know? And so what I realized, I'm like, girl, you're asking them, but how did your brain get bigger today? So even if it's something small, I just go out of my way to learn something, whether I listen to a podcast for 15 minutes, an audio book, you know, go outside and look in the neighborhood, just learning something new is such a really great way to add joy to your dinner conversation or your breakfast conversation with your family. But the joy takes work. A lot of people don't want to do that work. They don't want to do that work. Yeah. Are you ready to become more memorable, more magnetic, or more powerful from the stage? I don't know you, but I know you have a story and your voice deserves to be heard. I'm Patrice Washington. I'm a best-selling author and the host of the Redefining Wealth podcast. And I've been known for a decade as a powerful transformational speaker. And I want to invite you to speak with purpose. Your story matters. It deserves to be heard and people are waiting for you. So join me for Speak With Purpose. Click the link now. Joy takes work. And, and sometimes I have found that I did not choose joy because I wanted to please other people. Oh, all right, let's, let's go, let's do it then. Let's go ahead and take this left turn. <laughs> you know, even when you talked about like earlier, you were like, the laundry's gotta get done. So I'm gonna do laundry, I'm gonna outsource it, right? It may bring you more joy to dance around your house for that hour that you, uh, were, that you would have been doing laundry. 1000%, 1000%. And I talk about this, I, in the book, I talk about how uh, but my leak had actually DM'd me from the CEO of Curlbox. She DM'd me and she was like, oh, cause I, I was on stores and I was showing how good I was at doing laundry. Right. And she was like, she's like, I imagine because you have three small kids, you probably don't have a lot of time to do laundry. Why don't you just outsource it? Especially because it's criminally cheap. I will never forget it because the words were so specific. I was like, criminally cheap means that I could afford it probably four times over. And she was absolutely right. She gave me the person she used. And I, I couldn't believe for a family of five, I was like, is this 40 American dollars? Is this like legal? Like what's happening? You know? And what I realized is that one, I understand that not everybody may be in a position to do that. Right. But if you are, it's okay. Like me being good at laundry didn't mean that I needed to do it. I would much rather hang out with my family, my husband, myself, for those three, four hours it takes to do laundry every single week, because we have a family of five, then actually do the laundry. Like, yeah, without question. I hear people go back and forth about that, though, because someone else is going to be like, you can't do your own laundry. You know, you have mothers and we've talked about this before because you have the best village and I love how you talk about yeah, your in-laws and you talk about your parents and Maya your sister and just like yeah. you have this incredible village but I have heard and and also experienced to a certain extent where people are like you can't clean your house 
no, I, I know how to clean. Yeah. And I'm not going to. You're mis I'm you're to. misunderstanding what's happening yeah. here. Like, I, I, I don't I want to. Do <laughs> no, no, no. I can because I'm very capable, but I prefer to pay for peace. I did a whole That's podcast come episode. On, of come that. on. Come and on. My peace is not in scrubbing my own baseboards. Like somebody else enjoys that. They make a living from it. I'm able to bless someone else where that that's their thing right so that i can do the things that bring me joy and bring me peace one thousand percent have to debate about that well it's only a debate when it comes to women because when the lawn guy is cutting the yard they never question the mr the father the husband of the household why he's not cutting his grass i mean that's another that's another conversation maybe for another episode but i'm like it's never that like the, no one when the when the trash guys come in, you know, every week when the you know, it's like no one's like, oh, I can't believe you didn't take your trash all the way to the county dumpster. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, you didn't. You, I can't believe your husband's not up there cleaning that gutter like all the things. It's like you getting your oil changed. I can't believe he's not changing your oil. It's just those are not things we talk about. But if someone does my laundry, if someone comes and cleans my house every week, and I and I talk about this very candidly, and I said, I get it because there was a season where I had to do my own laundry because I didn't know of laundry service and or couldn't have afforded it. And I talk about what to do if you don't. I talk about batching because I, now I am very fortunate to have somebody come to the house every week and clean the house. But guess what? Uh, every night I have to load the dishwasher because it's not going to load itself. You know, my my oldest is seven, so she's not quite doing it on her own yet. But yeah, and and you you figure it out. But at the same time, I feel like there's like this guilt because we're so busy trying to please others. And I talk about this very dated, very outdated model of joy or being a woman, right? In the book that I was attached to because I was so busy trying to please others and I was coming up short because none of it mattered to me. Mm -hmm. I just was thinking about outside opinion, but none of it actually mattered to me. And also I'll go a step further, right? Because this is probably someone's truth. No one's even asking of that of me, right? No one's even asking, like, I, I talk about that. Like, I would like try to like make dinner when I came home from work, when I still had my nine to five and, you know, make sure I like, make, like Chris was okay. And like, it, Chris was like, I, I just, I don't understand why you're doing it. Like literally it would be like, I, I'm confused. I'm actually confusion right now. I don't know why you're doing this. No one asked for that. And so sometimes you have to step back and again, get into that self-awareness. Why am I doing these things? Does it actually matter to me? Does it matter to my family? Does it matter to anyone that actually matters to me? And like you said, I am so incredibly fortunate. And I know that's not, everybody doesn't have a one, a large village or a village that even lives near them, but like my, I didn't, I didn't, I have like the most insanely kind in-laws. They never ask of anything crazy. They show up for me whenever we ask, even when we don't ask. And so I was like, girl, you're misusing your every day. <laughs> you're misusing your every day because you're, you don't want to be self-aware. You're so busy trying to please these imaginary requests from people that did not even actually request it. You're misusing your every day. And anytime, I just don't want people to miss out on their magic, really, Patrice. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I really don't. And I get it. There is a lot of crazy, horrible things that are going on in the world. But if you step back and you decide to re like just shift gears into gratefulness and joy, you will be like, oh my gosh, I have actually had such an incredible life right in front of me. And I have been... I've been playing in my own face. Yeah. <laughs> like I've literally, you know? Yeah, that's so true. And I think so much of that can be rooted in happy when. Like mm. ideas of, well, well, I'll be happy when mm -hmm. this happens, that happens, like all the things. And, you know, you don't know what life has, you know, in store and You're to dumb. wait to find Girl. the joy, to wait to see the magic in who you are, what you already have, what you can touch, y you know, that just, it creates a cycle of not enough. Like, you know, yeah. like a moving target of like, you know, oh, when this happens, then I'll be happy. When this yeah. happens, then it'll be good. And that is just a never ending 
like conversation. It, it's like a mini cycle of like micro trauma, really, because you, you're always traumatized when something hasn't happened yet. And it's like, and that's why the everyday is so important, right? Because it's like, as is, I have joy. As is, I'm great. As is, you know what I mean? Everything else is a bonus, mm. right? And and what I really hone in in the beginning of the book, because the rest of the book, like I said, we really just talk about the everyday things because it was so important to me because I do think right now, especially with social media, and I get it, I'm close to it because I work on the internet as well, but I think we're in this very fantastical season of the, of the internet. Everybody's going on a yacht. Everybody's in Dubai. Everybody's in Greece. Everybody's in Mexico. I love it. I, everybody has a Chanel bag, uh, Givenchy. Everything is everything. I love it. I really love it. I am extra and I will never deny that. So I love seeing all these things, especially women that look like us getting a lot of these things generationally for the first time. So I think it's exciting. At the same time, though, there's a lot of us who still live an everyday life day to day. And because it doesn't look like what they saw on TikTok or look like what they saw on Reels, they think they're falling short. And this book was to be like, girl, not only are you not falling short, you're where the magic is at. I love that. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. In the book, you have a few magic rules and I want to just unpack <laughs> a couple of them. Um, we've already kind of talked about you don't have to be everything to everyone. I like the one where you say you don't have to wake up at 4.30 a.m. So I know because I've been a person <laughs> who has talked about morning routines, right? And I know I always see you on um, your Insta stories. We see Maddie <laughs> pouring her, in her coffee. Did you drink your water yet? Yes or no, before you move on to coffee, right? We have these different morning routines. I remember when my morning routine was me effortlessly waking up at 5 a.m. Yeah. Was like pre-pandemic. Like, that's just when my body would wake up. So when I would be interviewed and they say, well, describe your morning, it's on record of me describing, oh, yeah. you know, going in my prayer room, um, you know, meditation, prayer, journaling, all those things, which that is still a part of the day. Now it just happens at like seven, you know? <laughs> and I remember, I remember giving myself grace to say, why have you created this thing that if it's not done mm. in, the, in the pitch black, you know? <laughs> It's like, God can't see you, hear you. He don't want to talk to you. He don't want to hear from you. It's like, where did you get this from? And right. I used to have a thing about having to be at the gym by six o'clock, you know, or mm. 6.30. And now it's like, I go to the gym. If you watch my stories, my gym, you can't catch me because my, you know, <laughs> gym attendance is so sporadic. It's based on what I have going on. And I just have this thing like, I'm going to do it five, five days a week. How that pans out and what time of day and how it happens. Mm -mm, I'm not That's based on the schedule. It's based squats on schedule. still matter whether it's six a.m. or three p.m. They still matter, I, from what I read and understood. Correct me if right. I'm wrong, right. but they still matter whether Look, they're six a.m. or three p.m. I, I, I still must... think they are still working, yeah. but and any you know fitness professionals can chime in here. But yeah. I, I, it was important to me because as somebody who loves professional development books. Like I love it. I have read all the things I've read all the business insider Forbes. I've read all the things, all of the routines of CEOs. And I am also an early riser. I think just the way I work. And then again, just with the season I am in my life, like I like to wake up before my kids, the kids go to school year round. So they got up today, you know, they went to school, you know, and what the morning does for me is it gives me a pocket of me time. And I talk about this. I'm like, if you're a mother, especially of small children, waking up earlier than your family is usually when you can find that pocket of me time. But everyone's family wakes up at different times. So that might not be 5 a.m. for you. You could probably wake up at 630 and have a whole 30 minutes, maybe even an hour to yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. But I did not want to marry magic and the success of that framework to a certain time of when you wake up, you know? I love that. I love that because what I believe is it still gives us all an opportunity to just do what freaking works for us. It gives everyone an opportunity to run things through the filter of meaningful, aesthetically pleasing, goal-oriented, intentional, consistent, 
without being like, I have to do what Maddie does. I have to do what Patrice does. So when someone asks me even about my routines or how I do this or how I do that. Now, here's what's working for me. This is what I've learned to say, too, in this mm. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's something I've been really mindful of. And I know you do this a lot. Like you'll, you know, you'll chime in, whether it's like commenting to people who respond to your reels or, you know, even in stories. And one of the questions someone recently asked me was like, oh, like you're always like hair and makeup ready. You know, like, how do you do that? (laughs) And I'm like, I... (laughs) If you're watching, you'll understand the laughter. But I had, I, I was, I, one, I was so excited about the self awareness of even how to answer this question honestly, and and hopefully even in an encouraging way. And it was like I said, one, I was like, for my personality type, I just like getting ready. That's just part of my personality, right? Like that's Baby, like I have seen you go to the dentist. <laughs> Maddie came to my house one day, you guys. She said, friend, I'm going to be in your area. I'm going to stop by. And then she, I'm going to bring you lunch. This woman was going to the dentist. When I tell you in a floral dress, boobs, had heels on, came through my kitchen, click clacking. I said, who's going to the <laughs> dentist? You, you were looking at me like, if, if you didn't go to the dentist, just say that. Just, just, like- say, just say you went to a ball today. Just say you went to high tea. Where are you going? <laughs> So you talk about this is just Maddie. Okay. This is just my personality. And I wanted people to get, I was like, y'all, like I'm telling you when my budget was forever 21, mama still had on the fake pearls. I definitely had somebody's jumpsuit on. It was belted because you know, I love a belt. That's just always been my personality. And I I even talk about it in the book. Like I I have a second grade picture where I have this like fruit fruit dress on that my mom let me pick out. And I'm like, God bless her for like, because I was like, I I look low key crazy, but you know what? She let me do my thing. And so, but also it's also for my personality, what makes me feel confident. One, that's my personality type. Two, I am somebody who for my job, I am on camera at least 80% of the time. And then three, it's something that makes me feel like myself. In the book, I talk about finding your magic uniform. And this isn't where I teach you how to wear a dress every day, but I do say it's important for you to look in your closet and identify pieces that make you feel like your most confident self. Mm-hmm. So if that's sneakers, then girl, make sure you get all the sneakers. Like if you're into Jordans, like let's line these Jordans up. You know what I mean? If you're into loungewear, let's get into some like really cute loungewear sets. You know, if you're into denim, let's figure out the denim, you know, uh, the types of denim that make you feel good with your body shape, you, you know, and how, and how you navigate also in your day-to-day life. And so, because it's important to me, because I think a lot of times we see somebody we admire, we see Patrice and we're like, oh, well, I don't really like wearing bright lipstick, but, you know, Patrice was wearing bright lipstick and it looked really good on her. But, and so now you start to kind of like wearing bright lipstick was never something you wanted to do, but you saw it on somebody you like, you liked it on them. And now you, you are now are connecting it with your identity and thinking that's what you need to do. And it's like, no, you can like something from afar. There's many people who are like, girl, I love your dresses. It's not my thing, but you look really nice. And it's great. Same thing. You probably won't ever see me in like sweats and sneakers on a daily basis. You know what I mean? I have my days. We're running through the airport. It's raining. I need to take these kids to the dentist. Some days I might be in sneakers. You know, when I take myself, I can wear heels. But I feel like myself usually when I'm done, when I'm polished, and I want everybody to find their version of that, right? Like if denim is your thing, let's get into the denim collection. If sneakers are your thing, let's do that. If you love bright nails, let's make sure that we're making a, a, a revolving appointment every or recurring appointment every single two weeks to get your nails done. But it's all about what makes you feel like your best self because you show up differently when you show up confident, right? Because there's like a, there's a safety there. There's a safety that confidence gives you and boundaries. And I talk about this in the book as well, where it's like confidence usually comes from safety. And the thing that makes us feel safe is boundaries. That's why they exist to keep you safe. Mm. You know, That's literally why boundaries. You make that connection. No, it's, it's literally the only reason why boundaries exist. If you, if you take even humans out of it, 
the reason why there's a shoulder on the road is so you don't drive off the road. It's a boundary. Now, in the book, the example I give, and to me, it's the way I was able to understand boundaries, why I should set them or whatnot. Boundaries essentially, let's say they're a four lane highway. On the far right, it's your family, you know what I mean? You, and how you do, you drive a little slower there. You wanna be present. You don't have as much time, but you can move a little slower there, right? So the far left, it might be your business or your, you know, your corporate gig. And you, you know, you've got to stay, the pace is fast, it's really intense at all times and stuff like that. You can't drive in two boundaries, two lanes at the same time, right? You can't go 75, uh, in the right lane, right? And you cannot go 35 in the far left, right? They require different paces, right? Which is why there, there should be clear boundaries between them. The way you show up at work, like if my four-year-old came to work with me, even though I work from home, like it would just be completely different because I can't operate. I would be trying to, the duality of it would be, would just cause confusion. The other thing that we do, right? So even outside of trying to drive in two lanes, a lot of times we drive in the shoulder because technically you could drive in the shoulder, which is really when you don't have any boundaries, but what it does is it causes wear and tear on your car. And that's what happens to you. When you don't have boundaries, you can operate with no boundaries. And we've all seen it. And we've probably all had a season where we haven't had healthy boundaries set. But what that does is eventually, inevitable wear and tear, inevitable burnout, because it's like, that's not how you were meant to operate. You are not designed to operate without boundaries. If God can create the boundary between the sand and the sea, why would you be obsolete from boundaries? Why would you be immune to that? Mm. Just all willy nilly. I don't know. Why just, just, just winging it. Just winging it. Just on the shoulder. <laughs> I don't know when you were speaking, what it reminded me of is everything that is permissible is not beneficial. Mm. You well, know? and so just because you can drive on the shoulder, is it actually beneficial to be operating, you know, outside of those boundaries? I have not found. I have not just out there tearing them tires up. Then it's expensive because you got to go get new tires, AKA go to therapy way more frequently. <laughs> Than, than you would on a regular basis. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because you just didn't honor the boundaries. You just this didn't honor so the boundaries. Good friend, like what in your heart of hearts do you just want people to take away from everyday magic? I hope that people recommit, if not just commit to joy being a standard in their life. If at prayerfully, it's, it becomes the default. And I want us to get excited about our everydays and understand that there's honor in that. Like if you have a roof over your head, if you have food to eat, whether you're preparing it for yourself or your family, or you have someone who can even prepare it for you, all of these things are blessings that we should be wildly grateful for. I always say that gratefulness is the currency of favor. And so the more grateful I am, I, the, the more favor I notice that's in my life. And I am somebody who is obsessed with my life. I am obsessed with, you know, praying with the kids in the morning when we're driving to school and everyone's saying their affirmations on the way to school and singing the Encanto soundtrack. I'm obsessed with resetting my, my kitchen every night. Like I'm not cleaning the house every night, but best believe that kitchen island is going to be clear that dishwasher is going to be loaded. And what I realized with those things each give me joy, they're very different things and they both require work, but baby, I am willing to do that work because it's hard period. Life is hard period. You just got to pick your hard. I'd rather go with the hard with joy for me personally. Oh, pick your hard. We're going to choose hard with joy. That's it. That is a word for me in this season. You know, the season that I'm in right now is hard. But it would also be hard to stay in a season that I knew was expired. Mm, mm. Right? But let me let me cut you off, friend. Let me cut you off because this let me cut because I meant to say this earlier. We were in the flow. Your heart too wouldn't have been clear. Any season where our heart is not clear is not a season you want to stay in. It's not a season because your heart is so clear and such a hard season 
for anyone. And the most impressive thing to me as a friend is that your heart has stayed clear. I've never heard you say anything bad or just even even like complaining. You just be like, man, this one is hard today, but I'm going to get through it. You know, just an actual uh, authentic, consistent self-encouragement I, that you speak in. And so that's the thing. I'm like, guys, I get it. It's hard. But what is not hard? We talk, me and my husband talk about this all the time. What is not hard? What is not hard? And so it's like, step back. And it's like, let's just decide to do this hard thing because it matters to us. And you have the, the capacity to have a clear heart during it. Mm-hmm. That makes it worth it. Because if it's going to be hard anyway, let's make it matter. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that, friend. Before you go, you know, we do Redefining Wealth Rapid Wisdom questions. Yes. So I'm going to ask you these questions again. Let's see how your answers have (laughs) changed in the last few years. Okay. The first one is, how do you define success? Oh, how do you define success? I define success by... Making decisions, honestly, that please God, making decisions that please God. And that's not always easy because, you know, everybody has something to say or something to think. But really, in this season in my life, success is making decisions that please God. Mm, I love it, friend. All right. How do you define wealth in three words or less? Mm. Wealth to me is abundance, health, and I would even say mindfulness. Mm, That's good. I like that. That's good. Okay. What's one book that has helped you redefine how you see wealth? Okay, let me run it back. Okay. I know because you have so many books. I have so there. many books. I can't I can't even imagine how many I've read since. Okay, wealth. Okay. I think that mindset really did change my just overall thinking about everything, but it made me understand how I think and why I think that way. And if I can control my mind, then man, I can, I can navigate and control anything else in my life. So I would say mindset by Dr. Carol S. Dweck. Yeah. Is that the book that talks about growth versus fixed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Fill in the blank. My name is, and for me, the truth about wealth is, My name is Maddie, and the truth about wealth is, is that it has everything to do with what you believe about yourself and what you're willing to do to stay in that truth. Mm, Yes. Yes. Because either on the good or the bad side, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's really what that is. Friend, that is so good. I know I have told you privately many times from the time you told me you were writing a book (laughs) to you got the manuscript done to now by the time this hits the airwaves, it will officially be out. I am so, so, so proud of you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Go out and get the book if you don't have it already. Everyday Magic. If you don't have it already, go out and grab your copy of Everyday Magic um, and share this episode with uh, uh, several ladies that you know need it. I think that, you know, we had a chance to talk about a lot and I took away joy is the standard. <laughs> joy Point the, blank, period. Joy is the standard. And just like I fight to see the gratitude and everything, you are teaching me to see the joy in the everyday, like no matter what we are experiencing, even in the hard seasons, there is an opportunity to be deliberate about finding 
seeking out, embracing the joy in our everyday lives. You don't have to go to Costa Rica for your birthday. You don't. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed it, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to. If you do, good. Same if travels. you do, good. Like, you don't have to do all of these super extravagant things. Mm -hmm. There is literally joy that you can find in the everyday. And I'm so, so grateful to have you as a friend and as an example. You guys go out and pick up a copy of Everyday Magic. Make sure you hit Maddie up in social media at Maddie James. The Maddie James. The Maddie James. Yes. At the, the Maddie James. The Maddie James. That's what it is. <laughs> um, hit up. Uh, at the Maddie James, let her know that you heard her again or learned of her for the first time here on the Redefining Wealth podcast. Let's definitely support her. Um, you can find me at Seek Wisdom PCW. If you're brand new here, make sure you subscribe each and every week. We talk about different things that actually do end up impacting your finances. I know if you're brand new, you're like, I thought this was a money podcast. Trust me, <laughs> everything that we talked about, like Maddie said, actually does circle back and impact yep. your ability to produce wealth. And the way that you see your life, your environment, mm. your everyday is going to have an impact on how you pursue using your gifts and your talents and everything that God gave you to yes. produce financial wealth. Um, in the marketplace so there is a connection i hope you see that there's a connection and i hope that you will join us next week for another episode until then i want you to go live your life's purpose find fulfillment and earn more without ever chasing money talk to you later